morning, everybody. Um, Dr. Rasha, thank you for the opportunity to be here. Truly honored. I appreciate it. So I still hear the, uh, the bell ringing outside, so maybe we'll wait uh, a few seconds as people start coming in. The seats are getting filled, so. Okay. At any rate, uh, the topic of today uh, really deals with the challenges that Dr. Rashid uh, had, had iterated earlier, the challenges of trends of, of water and energy and, and what's happening in the world around us. So um, when we say smart cities, people sometimes struggle of understanding and or defining what a smart city is. It can be many, many things. So I'll go through some examples, and what does that mean to the environment that we live in? Okay. Um, China, who has been in the front and center of many things, fortunately or unfortunately lately, but uh, we have a, you know, an example of urban population uh, is going to be about 1 billion in China by the year 2030. And 2030 is just around the corner. It's not far from now. Uh, cities of all sizes are growing, actually, all over. The population of, uh, of uh, 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 it, the people will more than double by 2030. So we do have actual challenges in the world that we live in. Uh, as an example, there is this a mega city, if you may, uh, Jinjinji, which is, Jing is for Beijing, Jin is uh, Tianjin, Tianjin, and G is traditional name for Hebei. So if you look over here, uh, let me go back. How do you go back? Red, right? If you look at those cities in China, they actually make up a metropolis, a huge area, very populated and dense area. Uh, cities will contribute to basically 80% of our GDP, that's why urbanization is happening as we speak. The downside to this is cities will be challenged with vital resources. And as an example, public transport, water, health, electricity, and so on. And we don't have to wait for the year 2030. If you look at some of the mega cities or the big cities that we have today, Rio de Janeiro, they have issues with public transportation, Los Angeles, pollution, and so on and so forth. The trend in megacities, when we see here with the iceberg, and Dr. Rashid, you mentioned an iceberg earlier, what we see on top of the iceberg is a small portion of the entire iceberg itself. By 2030 again, and this is not so far, it is almost right around the corner. The world is projected to have 43 mega cities with more than 10 million inhabitants of each of those cities. The cities of today are not equipped to handle that from across the board, from resources to infrastructure, et cetera, et cetera. Most of these cities are developing in regions, uh, develop in, uh, are being in developing regions like Africa uh, uh, and, and Asia, part of Africa and Asia. One of eight people one of eight people live in 33 mega cities right now. So imagine the sprawling cities with just a bunch of people and they're doubling in sizes and they're coming up in an unprecedented manner. What would happen to the world that we live in right now? And if you narrow it down to just water and energy, what does that mean? It's a huge challenge. Therefore, smart cities is something that we need to think about. And what does that mean by smart cities is how are we controlling, monitoring, and making it more efficient and sustainable from a city infrastructure? So the perception is we have big mega cities. Reality is the growth in the, below the iceberg. That is the challenge. So what happens, again, with big cities, we have urban mobility challenge, transportation, cybersecurity, 
microclimate and water. Uh, some cities have their own, for some reason, microclimate, just because of whatever they produce uh, within their uh, boundaries. Infrastructure spending, uh, aging infrastructure, wear and tear on the infrastructure, energy supply and, and disruptions, and obviously work-life well-being. Uh, so life as we know it right now is not life as our parents knew it way back then, and life in 2030 is not going to be the same life as we have it right now. 